when you've got free studio at home and it's just on tap you know you can you can mess around a bit but you know I'm not some rich rapper I ain't some not some rich girl from Quaden that you know has unlimited this unlimited that if I'm paying for the studio time I'm paying for the studio time there's no I don't bring a bag of friends and family and we're not all chilling in the studio and people are bunning it down and like, that's, that's not what I'm in the studio for so once I've paid for it I'm going in there I'm doing something in there so sick you need the television app 24 7 mini documentaries podcasts live shows dj live streams top five subscription packages plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports download it from the app store for free today Yes, people, Killer Keller podcast, live and effect, direct, central, London, central as you need to be. We are going on Zoom right now. First of all, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk for holding it down alongside us. If you haven't checked out the Keller Vision app, you are severely lost in some room where you should really be downloading free Android iPhone from the App Store. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. We are on location. We're going out there. We're going way out there. Um, we will invite more information as we go along. But uh, we have inside the place new lyricisms inside. Queenie, how are you feeling, girl? Woo, I'm feeling good. What's up? <laughs> good, thank you very much. Hey, listen, I was just about you got the right idea right now. It's hot outside and you're out there. Yeah, yeah, it's hot outside. It's very warm. I'm liking this temperature. <laughs> where are you, where are you uh, transmitting from? Brayden, I'm transmitting from Brayden. Croydon Cronks. <laughs> hey, listen, there's some there's some heads inside Croydon right now. I'm this this you. is like the this is becoming a bit of a mecca for MCs and lyricists, isn't it? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. Sounds about right. Do you get a lot of them? Do you get a lot of that? Because you know when. When I think of uh, Croydon at the moment, I do really feel it's like holding a serious flag um, for the culture at the moment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are saying, you know, Croydon's got a lot of serious talent. I feel like the UK in general has got a lot of serious talent. Um, and we're just seeing, like, people rising up. As, as we have more examples in the mainstream, like, pushing and making it going forward, I see that people are still... It's making people want to carry on with their talent, like, push with their talent a bit more. Yeah, I feel that. I also feel like because of the, I mean, for some people, what the start of the year brought to them in lockdown was was um, a, 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 a level of entrapment, but it also made people try different ideas of get, of reaching their their sound and their music out to a wider field, didn't it? Yeah. Even doing this right now, I mean, mm -hmm. we're now on the fi finishing touches of of lockdown, and doing this has just become so the norm, hasn't it? Queen? Yeah, it has. Um, I think. This, coupled with everything that's come up in, with social media, I mean, yeah, Zoom meetings are becoming more normal. People work from home now and they're using things like this to have their work meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah, lockdown's definitely influenced. Yeah, and just, and just trying different now. things, isn't it? Just trying yeah. different ways of figuring out how to get your, your sound and your art across across the world, isn't it? Definitely. You yeah. just seem to me to be like one of those kind of artists that just like, is it kind of, I've got to be in the studio, I've got to do this, you know, I can't just be like sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, do you know what it is? I knew I had to be in the studio. I started setting up at home. That was not working for me <laughs> very well. Um, but it didn't stop me from writing. So um, I did, I did. I got in the studio a, a couple of times nearing the beginning of this year. Yeah. Nice. Uh, explain to me about that. Because there's some artists that are probably listening right now that could totally identify with the idea of like cottage industry doing it from home, recording on your own. Explain mm. to me what the what the deal was with that, that you, you felt like you had to be in a studio? It's the environment. So like, you know, when you have your work and your home environment separate, it's different modes. You know, for me, who I am as a person at home is not who I am as an artist. I mean, we're the same person, but it's a different mode. It's a different work mode. It's, it's your... It's, it's a profession sort of thing when you're taking it seriously. And when you're at home, you're taking home more seriously and those duties more seriously. So it's like, I needed that space. And um, thankfully, I had a great studio. Like, the studio I use is amazing. And it just puts me in that mode of, I'm recording now. I'm trying to put out material for my audience and my supporters. It just puts me in that mode. And, but when I'm 
at home. I'm not in that mode. I'm I'm in a different mode. I really appreciate that. There's a lot to be said for that. When you yeah. when you have like a studio set up in your house and you're just like going through all the time and it becomes so passe, doesn't it? It becomes like yeah. like cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that transitioning from a hobby to seeing actually where you could take this thing and taking it a bit more professional. I know some people, it's fine for them. They, you know, they can do it at home and it's very professional for them. And that's a space for them to do it in. But yeah. for me the space for me to take it professional is in the studio. I know I'm there to produce something great, basically. You know, and it's, I'm not like, oh, let me just record this little throwaway thing real quick. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to produce something that I can give to, them, to an audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and richly, richly spoken, true to the word. When I think about, when I think about what you've said there and listening to your stuff, which I'm a fan of, you know, like, and your name's come up a bunch of times, you know, I've had, I've had a, a, loads of different artists that pass through and your name has come up a couple of times and it feels like integrity in the songs. It, it feel, they feel like, you know, they feel like songs. They feel yeah. like well-rounded. Um, and I, I don't, I don't mean that. I'm, not that anyone else is trivialized. You understand? I'm not trying to be spicy on this, but like yeah. when you go into a place and you do something and you've set aside your time, you make that time work, don't you? Definitely. I mean, when you've got free studio at home and it's just on tap, you know, you can you can mess around a bit. But, you know, I'm not some rich rapper. I ain't some not some rich girl from Quaden that, you know, has unlimited this, unlimited that. If I'm paying for the studio time, I'm paying for the studio time. There's no I don't bring a bag of friends and family and we're not all chilling in the studio and people are bun it down. And if it, that's, that's not what I'm in the studio for. So once I've paid for it, I'm going in there. I'm doing something in there. So sick. Uh, so sick. Okay, so let's let's get into this, right? Because at the moment, for those of you listening and not watching, um, Queenie is most definitely inside her own house. Do what? Where do you write? Where do you write the lyrics? Like, where do you where do you put pen to paper? Is that in a studio in the same environment within the same time frame? No. Where writing is wherever inspiration hits. Do you understand what I'm saying? So writing could be just be like two lines that have just come to my head and I'm written it in my notes. Writing could be, do you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. Let me open up my laptop and get something going. Pen and paper, get something going. Um, it can happen at studio, but I, it's more of a free process. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. obviously the art's inspired by life. So, Yeah when you catch a wave of emotion or you get inspired from somewhere that's the culture that is the culture isn't it that's the culture so i mean i would say like okay quite a few rappers don't know how to freestyle like off the top like it takes practice to do that so i guess if you haven't been doing that for quite a while you're not really great at it. but one thing i do know that most rappers most lyricists that i appreciate can do i believe they can do is something's playing and you that you get like a a kind of a rhythm going you get kind of like you get the notes you get the words and like you kind of get like a pattern and you're like mm, 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 and it, you can put that to the instrument or the beat or whatever have you sometimes there's no instrumental playing or no beat you're just chilling and mm. something's come to your head and then a line might come and that is a, an element of freestyling do you understand what I'm saying I get that a thousand percent it definitely starts to form into something else later on you know it starts to form into words and songs and you know yeah that sort of thing I thousand percent agree in the context of like when you think about framework of freestyle MCing, which it, what like you like you quite rightly put, it's an art in itself. But the foundations are built on if you've got the frenetics and the pattern mm -hmm. up, off the bat, then mm -hmm. that's already f like 30, 40 percent of what freestylers need to go the distance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very much so. You're getting the patterns right and the notes and you're adding it, you're adding it all together. I mean, this is how I think some of the best write some things. It's just like you're definitely saying something in there, but it sounds good. It it sounds good to the air, like it's matching the last three words and it, it it's that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can get into syllables within words with the rhyming pat with the 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 consonants and vowels matching bar for bar, and then you're and that that creates a pattern in itself, doesn't it? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's... And that, that, in a sense, when I listen to your stuff, you can tell the craftsmanship in that. Oh, wow. It's good to yeah. hear. 
<laughs> there's a craft. Yeah, 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 for sure. There's there's a craftsmanship. I mean, it's really you know like in the era in an era maybe we've just passed this era to be fair but in the era of the kind of mispronunciation of certain things and the lack of energy on certain um you know consonants and vowels it's it's good it's good when something re- it, it, it harks back to a uh, like almost like a, it almost harks back to a night a, a, a early noughties style mm. of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. american rap you know what i mean yeah that storytelling era like I was walking down the street, da, 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 da. that that sort of thing <laughs> yeah. definitely goes all the way back to that um, dance culture as well. Like it definitely all stems from those areas. Do you see what I'm saying? Like it's definitely a fun. Everybody gets together and we get to dancing and making up music and making up some. You know, there's never a dull moment. Never a dull yeah, moment. Sure. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you mentioned dance all now. We okay. Yeah. So let's take it back. Let's take it back because you know, for those that you don't don't know about the Queenie, you know what I mean. Let's get into some introductory stuff. So, where did it all begin? Where was that? Where Where did music in, was introduced to you? How did it? How did you you come to this point that we're chatting right now? Okay, I was a kid when I wanted to write, and that came from. Where can I say that came from? I liked music. I couldn't say who it was, but I can definitely say that the first time I knew I wanted to write something, I was at like a family barbecue thing. There was a kid there, wasn't family, was came with somebody else or whatever have you, and he was making something up. And I started right. making something up. And it started from playing. So it started from a nursery rhyme turning into some turning it into something else and having a bit of fun with it right there, whatever have you. I was small, can't even remember what I said, but I knew that I wanted to play with words. Do you know what I'm saying? That's my yeah. whole thing. I always want to play with the words a bit, play with the music sort of thing. So that's where it definitely started for me. And that went on, you know, on and off over the years or whatever, what have you. But grime is actually where I found my place to be lyrical, is where I found my place to be, you know, be on instrumentals and be cheeky and mm. be alongside other people. And it was like the most amazing culture to train in, basically. Because before I was playing, but now without realising, I'm still playing, but without realising it, I'm training. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm learning how to be in front of an audience because obviously, you know, the grand culture, you're spitting to your peers who are the biggest critics. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they're yeah, 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 yeah. too. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it was just such a dope outlet for me. Yeah, the grime scene, particularly in the early era of grime, there was, like you say, there's the play, but then there's serious play. We're, we're having a serious game here. This is yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a game of chess. <laughs> but, but with the game, though, it was it's especially in that era of its humbling, humblest beginnings. There was there was certainly a lot of scope because the 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 rhyme patterns the play on words it was all kind of it was a combination of chant and um and just layman's lyrics you know just just almost like prototypes just like ideas Mm -hmm. and then as things kind of grew then then you could fill in the gaps as that kind of developed and moved on you must have like found these like entry holes where you're like oh actually you know what i could i'm gonna i'm gonna do it like that because no one's yeah. doing it like that yeah, yeah yeah you you find ways to be yourself basically grime what grime was is it was a culture it was what was going on in the streets at the time it's how the how we were feeling is how we were connecting with one another and that came out in the music sort of thing it's like how you present yourself and all that other stuff like like i was saying to my manager the other day i was saying like if I was in America, my, my training ground probably would have been battle rap. But in the UK, my training ground was grime. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that was yeah. what was going on in the streets. That was the culture that was going on in the streets. 100%. You would have been like some URL beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that would have been the route that I probably would have came through because that's that's the side I was coming from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then came all the contemporaries, you know, um, I like, I liken your sound. Well, first of all, Jazz Kahina, she, yes, MC, she she's fire. Um, but then you've got the Gets and the Kanos, where the the punctuation and the, just the value in each word. Mm-hmm. So you do have this. I mean, you know, this is 
you, you know, this is just my humblest of, uh, of, of observations, you understand. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, there's these combinations where there is it's identifiably grime, but the lyrical value you've, you've, I think you've, you've raised that, that in your, in your presence within grime. It doesn't seem to me I like. I appreciate that so much because I feel like Kano and Getz are very important because I would put them on the world stage with any rappers in any country, the best of their best of their best, because they value the lyrical content. But then you can also hear over the years, even from the beginning, really, um, how they wanted it to sound good to the ears as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, right. So with Grime, you know, we're putting the words together. It's very intelligent, very smart. Then there's that graduation of making it sound nice, like it sounds like palatable, but you haven't compromised lyrically. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that's why I guess I would concede them on any stage. Do you understand what I'm saying? They don't just value the lyrics, they value the ears that are receiving it and like, okay, how can I get this to you without you missing absolutely everything? I, mean, like, I, I want to make it enjoyable for you, but I want to still maintain that lyrical integri- integrity, I guess. Yeah. Thousand percent, man. And and Kana really did create the structure of this, you know. Like mm-hmm. gets 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 kind of moved forward with the prototype that Kano started. Like Kano did the string stuff. And I feel like I feel like gets found his way. I think he uh, you know, because they came up together, I can see mm. how they would have had the same influences. Do you understand what I'm saying? For sure. But depending on how their lives panned out, would have seen the direction that it went in. So I can hear how Kano and Getz are so similar, but I can I, I can also hear how there must have been life changes that made them go in their respective directions. Furthermore, to, to add value to what you just said there, I, mm. I also feel like <clears throat> Kano, and, Kano and Getz, uh, oh, there was someone else I was thinking as well. Dave, maybe? There was, oh, oh, for sure, gigs. Um, there is a diction. There's, there's a diction to their lyrics and also a tone to their voices. Mm. Like you say, that it doesn't make it polite. It just makes it, if you're an American ear or a German ear, the, the, the approach starting with the, do I like the sound of their voices? That I feel it. Yeah. And you have that as well. I love that. Yeah. You know Thank what I'm saying? <laughs> Almost on a Missy Elliott level. If you're going, if you're going international, there's a certain roadmap as an artist which you take, which which actually opens more doors as long as you're actually <laughs> accepting to to want to go down the moon. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think you yeah. already know that you know yeah. the, the, that that route, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you don't want to compromise, so you find something where you can still be authentic to who you are, but the audience can take it too. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, it's it's sick. It's sick. Um, how much uh, how much time do you put in the studio? Like when you when you say because it's a lot of money to be going in the studio. Like I, <laughs> it can be anyway. I mean, if, unless unless you've got a producer that's already got your, you know, your 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 uh, your sound mastered, and you all you got to do is just roll in. It can be quite expensive, can't it? It can be so. There's when when you start thinking about your audience, there's a few ways that you can do things. Um, there was a time as because there's a bit of pride as a rapper as a lyricist to be able to go in the studio one take bang out a song, right? Of course, of the Jay Z the Jay Z yeah. effect in it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's there's so much pride in that. There's like you know you really want to be able to do that. When before that's how I was working, I would just go out, go in, do like eight songs. Do you know what I'm saying? I could, I could, I could do that. That's easy. Like, do that. Then with my last project, the Forte that came out on the 21st, I was like, I don't care about banging it out as quickly as possible. And now I'm really caring about the sound of it. I never really worked on how I want it to be mixed, how I want it to sound, what's mastered down. So I wasn't going into the studio and saying, I want to record everything in one go. I was going to the studio saying, I want to do two or three. I want to be here whilst you're mixing and mastering. I want opinions that I value here so it's saying okay yeah like that's all right da, da, da. no you weren't going as hard as you were supposed to there mm. because I wasn't so much caring about you know getting this one take thing I was more caring about the project as a whole and the integrity of the whole project do you understand what I'm saying I so yeah I can 
yeah, I can write a track and I can learn it, and I, or I can, I can at home, I can you know make a like a bass for it, like re- record it like quickly, just to you know, maybe see how it sounds, and then go into studio and then bang it out. But even if I do record it at home first and then t- you know listen to it a few times and then go into studio to record just it, just to get, to get to get the flow right, so you know yeah. that it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm still not. I'm still going to take my time in the studio. I'm not. I'm not that person anymore. I know it costs. Um, and so things might not happen for me as quickly as it might happen for somebody who's got money, but I'll, I know I'm putting out the quality basically. I could. I I did it. I, when I used to go to the studio, my whole thing was, no, I'm coming here. And it's also having other people in the place that mm. are working on the song at the same time mm. and crafting it with you. Some ideas are formulated, which you would never thought of doing on your own. Mm. That's super important. Um, yeah. Tell me why, tell me why you think, um, is that a peer pressure thing? You know, the idea of having to go in and do like six to eight songs battered them out, you know, shell them in like three hours and be like, done. Is that- um, I think it's the love of music where it comes from. I know that's where it came from for me. I this love of being able to deal with words that way. Do you know what I'm saying? To, to, to push it out and bang out a song and know that you've got that gift in within you. But it's that transition from understanding I've got a gift but how am I going to shape it? Like, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to present it? Like, you, you can give somebody a gift in a paper bag or you can wrap it up nicely, you know, put a bow on it. Like, this, how are you going to present the gift? And it depending on your audience, basically. Some of the audience might like it to be in paper craft. You understand know what I'm yeah. saying? They'll really appreciate that. And some of them want it in that glossy, shiny wrapping paper or whatever, what have you. But when you start learning who your audience is and what they appreciate and you know, the kind of music they might be listening to. You're no, you're no longer saying, okay, I'm trying to prove I've got a gift. I don't need to prove I've got a gift anymore. I've got a gift. Everybody knows it. And I'm bringing a gift. But how am I going to wrap it now and package it and give it to people? That's for sure. I've lost for that sure. whole thing now. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about that. There are these moments, though, and you know the ones I'm talking about, <laughs> right, where all of this in theory is is correct and present. You know, we want to tie it up, bow it up, send it out. And, and the anticipation and, and value that you have from people saying, yes, I really like that. Or, yo, I think it, I, I think this is onto something you should. But then there is this zeitgeist moment where you could just walk into a place and it's just a normal day. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you bust out mm-hmm. some bars mm-hmm. and you're done within mm-hmm. like 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You, and you're like, you walk away like God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know what? I get that. That's why I will still forever stay connected to Graham because, yeah, I've got a point to prove. I'm walking in and you've got an opinion, but you shouldn't have that opinion of me. You're yeah. going to hear something completely different. And I I speak really nicely and I'm very sweet. And then I, when I touch my I'm very serious. Like you will recognize me as a very serious lyricist, a very serious rapper. And I'm good to like, even if I'm re-recording something, like sometimes the first time I'm using a studio, if it's the first time I'm using that studio, I need them to recognise, okay, you're dealing with somebody who's very serious here. And that's the best way to make them take you seriously. I took like, that shit! Really took that shit! <laughs> 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 yeah, because when you go into those places, it really is like point to prove, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. I want everybody to be on the right page with me and understand who they're dealing with, basically. And then after that, it's cool because you know what I can do. Then where there's no more conversation or discussion about that, like, let me just move on and hand them out. I've got nothing to prove here, nothing to say. What's the state of mind when you walk when you walk into a place? I guess it's similar to when you walk onto it into a rave or you walk on a stage and you're about to, you know, touch mic. But but what's what's the mindset? What is it a sports? Is it a sports person's mindset walking into a, a situation that's new? Um, yes, it's definitely a, a kind of... Huh. Would it be a sports mindset? It's more like the new girl at school kind of mindset. Like, right. you know, she's a new girl, you know, does she know anything? We've been learning this stuff. Like, she, 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 she's even familiar with all of this stuff. And it's like... I'm coming into this space like as your peer. I'm not coming in for you to like accept me necessarily, but for you to just understand that I'm 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 a peer. I'm not someone you're not going into school in this. I'm good. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's that kind of man- mindset. 
it's I love shocking people. They're always going to be shocked for some reason when I touch my. And I like that. That's fun. That's exciting. You see the faces change, mouths drop, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. That's that's what we're dealing with here. So um, yeah, it's it, that's fun. That's that's a bit of sport for you, really, isn't it? Yeah, a thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the that's the you know the one is when that's the kind of thing that if you're in a boxing ring and mm. you go for the first swing and you kind of just miss but but you not but they already know that you've got you've got the chops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they that's were like, it's going to be an easy day today, and you're like, no, it's actually not going to be an easy day today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what happens, right? And this is again relating to the grind thing that w- when you're in the arena and someone raises that bar it does automatically make everybody else's game that much better. Definitely, a thousand percent. I've, I've been to places where, and this is not to even brag or anything like that, but I've been, to, been in spaces where there, there, was, there was an element of not trying in the room. Like, you're just not mm-hmm. trying. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy for you and very simple. But there's a few of us in this scene, females I'm talking about, who, when we enter the space, everybody sits up straight again. And I'm not even just females. There's a few rappers and MPs in this scene in the UK, right, where the the game gets a bit like everyone's sitting down, they're calm, they're used to it, going for the motions. And then somebody comes in the room, there's a rapper in in this UK here that Mm. walks into the room, and they didn't come in to be mediocre, they didn't come in to chill, they really love this music thing, they haven't got maybe the opportunities that everybody else has got, and they're hungry. And they come in and it's like, oh, wait, we've all got to stand up again. Like, we've got to keep raising the bar. We've got to keep coming up. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. And I think those people are very healthy for the scene, music scene in the UK. I think they're very healthy for the grime scene. I think they're very healthy for the rap scene. I even think it's very good for the R&B UK, the music scene, yeah. you know, in the UK. When there's, there's just that person that comes along and they're still very, very hungry. And they're not, they're saying, yeah, there's a formula over there and it's working. And it's very, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you understand what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm going to do things a little bit different and I'm going to come hard again. And then it makes everybody else say, oh, yeah, wait a minute. Like, we're doing music here, you know. Do you see complacency? Is that something that you you immediately, is that a red flag to a ball? Yeah. Complacency is a bit of a red flag. I mean, I'm not here to make anybody, like, stop being complacent or whatever, what have you. But I don't feel that pressure to be complacent along with everybody else. And I don't, I feel like I sound different. I feel like my whole vibe is different. Um, And I feel like that's because I'm trying to do my best. I'm not trying to fit with anything that's already working. I'm doing something that's maybe not working. But I'm saying it's going to work. Yeah. Shall I tell you why I think it, 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 the variety, I think, in your, in your, uh, um in your armory you you have mm. like you've got like mad variety like mm. it just seems to me that there's a there's a tone and texture to your voice and a certain clarity leans uh, you know i've gone through i've gone through a bunch of tunes for the last few days man in the gym especially <laughs> you know I've, I've got to punish myself so you know i need some i need some music to get me through uh yeah, variety, man. Like you can flow on a lot of different on a lot of different rhythms, can't you? Mm, yeah, and there's that people will tell me, no, you've got to find this one sound, this one sound, this one sound. I I think my sound is just being dope, like having fun with the music. That's my sound. I'm not really interested in this one lane thing that you know you get pushed into, and then you have to be this one thing. You have to dress this one way and talk this one way. You are the ingredient. There you go. You're the ingredient. It's like John Coltrane with a sax or Buster mm. Rhymes. Just Buster Rhymes on any beat. There you go. In any arena. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's, I think that's like the highest acclaim you could, you know, you could reach for, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Look at our fave. Look at our fave, Beyonce. Like, whenever she drops a project, it's never sounded like everything that's out there at the time. Mm. You know, she's just she's just making music that she thinks is great and she's not trying to say, I want to make it like them, I want to make it like them. She's doing her thing really. And you know what separates her from Rihanna and that is I think with Beyonce is like her again the the, the focus is the songs because they they they're a long-lasting legacy. 
Mm. Um, you don't forget. To, to, Rihanna, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, oh, I can, I can probably remember like three songs she's done that if if it came on at a big concert she was doing, I'd be like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. that is staple, Rihanna. But there's there's others where I can't quite remember what she's done. <laughs> I think I think I'm like with Ri. I'm like she's a rock star, isn't she, Rihanna? I feel like when she was when you think about the music that she was dropping, okay, yeah, there was a bit of variety. You know, the stuff that she was doing with Eminem was definitely not on the re- replay, was it? No, it definitely. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Like Rude Way wasn't, you know, Umbrella. It yeah, was like it, 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 I need her next album. I need her next. Yeah, album. yeah. Just to clarify, I need, I need just the to, next project. That's right. Just to cement the legacy and what she's done, because everything up till now, um, n- not that it's disposable. It's just you don't, you know, a legacy of Beyonce stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. off the bat, and you know yeah. that you could play it like you'd play a Michael Jackson record and yep. or a Prince yep. record. Do you know what I mean? And it kind of holds. She's a legend water. to me, so. As, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, anybody who's raising up Beyonce is like, hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and I and that's just not just you know being a Beyonce fan. That's not. That's like I really appreciate. She, you know, when she did that interview, she said, you know, people aren't making albums anymore. Like, it made me feel like, what type of artist would I want to be if I was an artist? You know, she was just like, people aren't putting craftsmanship in there anymore. They're just banging out these projects. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt that. I feel that too. And when I think when pe- when artists talk like that about things, it's very easy to think, oh yeah, and you're, you're an old head. You're just talking from that place. But no, actually, there is some value to what what she's actually trying to say. And mm. and, and if you take the gold out of those 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 more honest conversations, mm-hmm. you get artists like yourself. That, yeah. Do you know what I'm and saying? That, and that's on anything. I mean, I bet there's architects out there right now, builders out there right now. Who 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 are thinking? People don't build houses anymore. They don't build it from brick and mortar and anything. They're just doing these fast houses that come up in no time and in no space. And in mm. any ca- kind of profession, there's somebody saying, "No, people aren't doing this anymore. People are doing this quick thing, and they're not taking time. And there's no love and there's no care in it." Chefs, there's a chef somewhere saying, "People don't cook anymore. People don't make up recipes anymore." You know. People aren't in the kitchen that like, really feeding the ingredients and smelling them and doing all this. They're just they're just doing this fast thing, you know. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. It's in all. The, it's in the world right now. There's a whole vibe going on. And there's somewhere who's someone who's just being considered an old head saying there's not this anymore. And it's not because they're dissing the new thing. They're saying even if you're doing this new thing, like sm- smell the ingredients. Like think about what you're putting in the mix. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's super important, and I think maybe yeah. that if this is a, this is a seasonal thing as well. Like what yeah. we're talking about now is it probably it probably would have come up like six months to a year ago, but people weren't ready for it. And I think there is this seasonal thing where things come back around, and it makes it a lot more easier for people to listen to these these more honest conversations, isn't it? Mm-mm, yeah, for sure, for sure. Because I love the new stuff that are coming out. But I'm not gonna disrespect an old head. I mean, an old head might say to me that you're doing this, but you need to think. There's some things you take, and there's some things you leave behind. But then I'm thinking you're not saying this to be malicious. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And not you're not just a hater because you you love music. Do you understand what I'm saying? You just wanna again. I said it a like hundred times already. Maintain the integrity of the music, basically. So there's a bit of art in there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Before. That's the make. That's the most important. That's the most important message to to send through. What artists at the moment? What artists at the moment are you like? Yo, like on balance that you know, new wise that you're. I mean, that you're into at the moment. That you're that you would you would say, yeah, man, that's not my genre. That's not my style. But I'm, I fuck with that. That's sick. Yeah, Doja Cat. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah and Doja Cat. Um. <laughs> It, I, it's not nothing that I make. It doesn't sound like nothing I make, does it? But I can hear how they've put like this whole craftsmanship into what they're doing. There's a vibe to it. Yeah. Um, Doja Cat in particular, um, it's been a long time. I'm not saying like female rappers, artists, singers haven't been, you know, putting in the work, but she she's like hit the ground, like performing, thinking mm. about her bars, thinking about her voice, off camera, off off performance, off entertainment, you know. The way she is as a person, the way she puts herself across on camera and stuff like that, I'm like, 
she's putting a whole load of work into what she's doing. There's like, there's a yeah. whole art. She's really taking it seriously. She's really like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to perform. And yeah, B is a is recent, it, recent one for me. I, I listen to Go, go it, ahead. That is an, it's an integrity thing, isn't it? Like, it's definitely I feel like she walks thing. out, there's a walk in how you talk it. Yeah. Um, Shay Lingo. Okay. Shay's okay. Universe. Um, there's a, there's a R&B artist in the UK called Bella. Fire. You know, Ariel, there's, there's, obviously everybody knows my favorite lioness. <laughs> you know, she. <laughs> my gosh, I, I wish people would just more, and more for her because integrity, integrity in the music, even the way these people perform. You know, they're not just playing like a backing track, like not a backing track. They're not just playing the main track and then just going over it, kind of. You know, yeah. when they perform it, they're, they're performing their songs. Yeah, Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep, I they're agree, doing it. And obviously, we all love Gets and Kano and Wretch and we love them you know <laughs> yeah, exactly but again you're you, the the younger guns the new acts the, mm. the 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 ones that are creating the new taste in in taste making mm-hmm. like wretch and them guys they they they've had time in the sun you know yeah, yeah, yeah. like this this is the time to spot any complacency as as a newer a newer act and just Gun, gun, go! Because all of the all of the parameters exist. All the ingredients are out there. So it's like, well, what? A thousand like, percent. Do you know what I mean? Like, I love what Dave and Fredo did on their project. Like, <laughs> I just felt like, yep, you managed to sound fresh in a genre that's like it's becoming repetitive because we was hearing all the same thing over and over again. But how did you manage to sound so fresh, so clean, so professional, yep. so you know, vibey? Like, you just you just brought it all in that project. So I was like, I'm like, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving what I'm seeing. I'm loving what I'm seeing in UK entertainment in general, our actors, our rappers, our singers, yeah. you know, I can sit down and listen to music in, from the UK. I was only saying this the other day about Dave, like how, how to come, I've, it's almost like, I heard that before, but not like that. Mm. It's just a whole different thing. You know, mm. someone else who I still feel like, who I feel like we're, we're yet to see the, and hear the best of is Slow Tie. Mm-hmm. I just think he's, art, artistry. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. He kind of encapsulates slaves with Dizzy, mm-hmm. bit of the streets, but with some, you know, with some kind of more aggressive elements to it too. I just feel like there's a, there's still a lot more to be discovered. He's just he's he's very well rounded as an act, isn't he? He's at the edge right there. Is that, what I like about it is. Where at one time we might have thought in the UK, oh, we've got a sound like this, we've got a sound like that. Look at the variety of artists you're getting. Like, look at the variety of sounds, the variety of genres. Like, it's yeah. like, I'm just loving it. The yeah. range, it's the range for me. <laughs> yeah. And I think skill set is back in in court, isn't it? A thousand. Yeah. A thousand. So what's the future, girl? What's What's going on? What's goody? More music. The future is more music, more performance, more live. Um, oh yeah, so you've been doing some live. I saw you jumped in. You got you got into some live thing recently, right? Yeah, right. I did. I launched my EP on the twenty first with a launch event that was dope. That was at the New Cross Inn, um, and I performed the whole thing. That was dope. Then I did Emergence Fest, and um, that was in not Eastbourne, like Hastings, kind of thing or whatever. What have you at the yeah. Delaware Pavilion? That was amazing. Um, that was two 45 minute sets. I did that with Lioness and Laughter. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That's that was, not a basic night, is it? <laughs> it was not a basic night. It was not a basic night. You know, there was uh, like a trumpet and a saxophone in our second set. Like they would say with amazing the instruments. Sorry, I've got things all flying around me now. So, right, um, you're, you're in the jungle now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that time of the day. <laughs> that time of the day, mate. So, yeah, no, that was amazing. I'm looking forward to doing some more stuff. I mean, I'll be dropping another EP this year. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm liking how I'm experimenting more with music. I'm so much more comfortable. I mean, I dropped my first solo single 2018, 19, 2019 actually is when, yeah, 2019, 2020. Yeah, 2019, I dropped my first solo single. Damn, um, that's nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, almost two years ago now. Sonically, sonically, it's like time stood still. It's like, I think, I don't know, maybe it's your choice in sounds and beats. Who does your beats? 
Ah, oh, it's a range, you know. I mean, on Forte, three of them were done by um, a guy from Sweden called Pendo 46. Um, one of them was an, was an Afrobeats guy from the UK, um, producer 106. Um, and Impala Drummers, another another producer. Not not really known producers, to be honest with you. If I find a producer and they sound good, I'm going to work with them. If I get a vibe of the, you know, like I was saying, you know, the, the, the basics of freestyling, if I start doing something to it and getting a pattern and everything like that I'm like yeah I want that mm. John the Dreamer John the Dreamer I use him for my track letting up now um, he's amazing mm. yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah that killed that tune it's funny isn't it it's funny how like you, you get off on like the weirdest of things with beats and mm-hmm. what they mm-hmm. what you hear in it isn't the thing that the producer heard that's the there you go yeah it's not Rip of Man produced Laid Out which was so much different to letting up now I feel like all my music's just been sounding different as, as I evolve and people might be predicting what they're going to hear on the next thing I mean I know nobody was expecting screenshot on the Forte project and the next project they're not going to be expecting that either all these different characteristics coming out because I grow and learn as a person and as, and as an artist yeah, that's the that's the shit. Talk that shit. That's the shit we like to hear. Yeah, you got to kind of switch it up. You can't have it the mm-hmm. same every time because mm-hmm. you want to keep people and you want to broaden the horizon, make mm-hmm. more more fans as you go along, and just build, yeah. build, build. That's the future, and it's great that you're doing it live. Mm-hmm. Big up, girl. Thank you so much for joining me on Thank a Killer you Killer so podcast. Much. That was dope. Make sure you guys do too. All right. Um, thanks very much, man. Enjoy the rest of your sunny day. Thank you for having me. That big up Queenie said so on all my social media accounts. Believe that Queenie <laughs> said so, not me. <laughs> Queenie, listen, stay lucky, people. We are lucky. Was out of fashion. Killer Keller podcast striking at a vengeance again. All right, tell a friend to tell a friend and don't talk to anybody. I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. <laughs> Cheers, Queenie. Peace. Cheers. Peace.